Tori, who is Ubiquity and why should the ecosystem be listening? Yeah, so Ubiquity is really focused on providing services to the financial services and fintech industry. Uh, we do things like customer service, risk management, um, we offer IVR services or automated services, we do software development, and everything we do is really focused on financial services. Uh, we do this around the world, so we have offices in the Americas, in Asia, and in Europe. Um, and we bring a lot of expertise to the table, certainly, but we also have a lot of interesting investments in technology that uh, help to deliver our products and services in, in a more seamless way and uh, ultimately deliver better net promoter scores, better customer retention, um, and, and better client satisfaction, ultimately. And I know you really pride yourself on you know, innovative processes when it comes to staffing, so talk to me about that. Yeah, so staff are really at the heart of everything that we do. You can spend a lot of effort coming up with good processes and you know, have everything kind of tightly wound up, but if the person that's talking to the customer you know, if, if it's a bad interaction, it doesn't really matter to the customer what you've done in the background to try to prepare everyone for that. So we're really, really focused on developing and retaining the best people in the industry. And in a call center environment, that's really difficult. There tends to be high turnover, you know, a lot of attrition that's very common. There tends to be, you know, sort of a, a, a a nature of staff that kind of float in and out, right? That's very typical. So we've tried to really professionalize the work environment and focus on a, a culture of lifelong learning. That's one of our core values. And to really support that and to support our leaders, we've spent a lot of time developing processes that um, help ensure that our, our leaders are good coaches and, and good developers, basically. Um, we've spent a lot of time ensuring that we have a good way to assess whether people are, are good leaders. And we've developed technology that, that's really at the heart of this. So unlike a lot of uh, call center environments, if you go to one of our offices, you would find that all of our team leads, and instead of having a desk, they actually have a tablet. They spend all of their time with their teams, coaching their agents, um, training and developing them. And we found that that really helps to drive better staff retention. It helps to deliver better employee satisfaction, which is one of the things that all of our executives are bonus to, based on is, is actually employee satisfaction. And it helps to deliver ultimately a better um, customer experience. And I don't want to give away secret sauce or anything like that, but what are some of the characteristics that you look for when it comes to a team leader and teammates alike? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, first of all, I would say that everyone's got to be passionate about what they do, and, and that's so important. And, and look, in a, unemployment rates aren't very, uh, very high at the moment, so it's a competitive uh, labor market, especially here in the United States. It's difficult to find passionate people, but we really believe that if you build a passionate team, that it, it attracts other passionate people. So one of the, the best recruitment methods for us is really employee referrals. In fact, about half of our staff is coming from employee referrals at a number of our locations. And we think that's a testament to the culture that we've built and the focus that we have on um, on creating a development-oriented culture. So passionate people, that's really important. Um, and I would say that on the leadership side, you know, there's, there's often a tendency for people to say, well, my best performing agent, for example, might be my, the best candidate to become a leader. But that's not necessarily true. You know, some, sometimes someone's really good at doing a job, but they don't have leadership skills. Certainly we work to develop leadership skills throughout our organization. Um, but not everyone is going to be a, a natural leader. So I would say that uh, you know, when we're looking at, at team leads and, and other leaders within the organization, we're looking for people that, that deeply care about people, that are good communicators, and that, that have a, a kind of instinct to nurture and coach people. Because really, at the end of the day, Everyone in our organization um, is, is going through a development plan at any given time. That doesn't always mean it's leading to a promotion. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it's, it's always developing to the next level, whether those are skills you know, that, that people keep with us for 10 years within our organization or that they bring to their, their next position. So taking out the figurative crystal ball, what's on the horizon for Ubiquity? Yeah, so obviously um, artificial intelligence is, is kind of on the horizon. It's gotten to the point where 
we think that it's it's going to be a significant contributor to um, our business. The, the, the fundamental thing, though, is that we feel that customer service is going to continue to rely on human connections into the future. Just because you can automate something doesn't mean it's a good idea to do so. So what we're really focused on um, through an initiative and a company we call Agent, it's a company that Ubiquity has founded, um, we're focused on um, software that essentially listens to conversations in real time between customer service agents and customers, and it tries to help the agent to be more effective, to sell better, upsell and cross-sell, those sorts of things, um, ultimately to deliver a better customer experience while also looking for compliance elements, um, seeking things like social engineering to make sure that we warn agents that you know, that there might be sort of a risk implication to a call. So we're really looking at it as sort of a invisible helper that's sitting next to an agent that taps them on the shoulder just at the right moment to say, hey, you know what, you might want to tell the customer this, or you've told the customer that, but actually that's not right, you should correct that. Um, and so we really see the human staying in the interaction into the future, but simply being made better by artificial intelligence. So that's what we're focused on. Well, it sounds like Ubiquity has a great strategy moving forward. Corey, thank you so much for your insights. Great, thanks for your time. From Adichie Studio, I'm Shannon Rossick.